Hello, my friends. My name is Ryan Freeman. Welcome to another book review. Today, I have for you On the Aesthetic Education of Man by none other than Friedrich Schiller, a German poet, playwright, and philosopher. This was published in 1794. It is a very old book, but uh, for those of you who are interested in aesthetics, which is the branch of philosophy that deals with questions of beauty and principles of art, uh, as well as any human who is interested in psychology and balancing the various faculties that vie for control within ourselves, I believe On the Aesthetic Education of Man by Friedrich Schiller is a very good book to read. Um, so in this video, I am just going to tell you some of my thoughts, my opinions. I am not a professional philosopher. Uh, I believe that um, this is a work that deserves perhaps a second or even a third reading to fully understand. In fact, in the very introduction, the translator uh, explains that this work is perplexing to even a great majority of very intelligent people because Friedrich Schiller, uh, he's, he's writing not so much just this one long essay or one philosophical treatise. He is writing, uh, I believe there's maybe 27 letters within this book. He's writing it over a course of several years where he is uh, changing his own mind. He, the world uh, around him is changing. He begins writing these letters to a Danish prince. And at that time, there was the reign of terror during the French Revolution, where many people were being massacred, where uh, the age of reason was not really bringing forth the fruits that many hopefuls had thought it would. Um, on the aesthetic education of man, it is basically uh, uh, these 27 letters where Friedrich Schiller is elaborating on his concept of the play impulse. And what I mean by that is he's talked, and other things than that, like the, the value of art, the transformation of society, how man becomes whole, how to, how to uh, even uh, socially, how to build a society. Um, and so I will try to unpack some of that. Um, and he, the original letters, many of the original letters were burned in the Danish prince's palace, uh, but copies were made and copies were edited and by Schiller himself and, and changed. And so, you know, these letters have gone through a lot of different uh, transformations. Um, through the transformations of Friedrich Schiller's life. Uh, and so several words, um, there, there is a lot of criticism about that, about it is unnecessarily uh, difficult to understand because Friedrich Schiller, uh, ch you know, he defines a word like reason or nature uh, in, in many different ways throughout. He's, he, what I'm trying to say is some of the critics have said that Friedrich Schiller was not uh, as consistent as they would have liked him to be. Um, the, the person who wrote the introduction says that uh, that is a fair criticism, but that you should not throw out these letters because they have golden value um, for anyone who is interested in many of the things that I've just talked about, which is balancing the inner man, um, psychology, the retransformation of society, using art to not only uh, better ourselves, but to um, but to build our society on on more beautiful beautiful concepts and beautiful ground and the moral how how to become a moral person, how to build a moral society, all of these these things Friedrich Schiller uh, talks about, and he talks about it in a very compelling way. So Friedrich Schiller um, is a poet and a philosopher. And the, the person who wrote the introduction said, you know, he might not satisfy the pure philosophers who are looking for that consistency. Uh, and he might not um, satisfy the poets who are just looking for that, that feeling because Schiller is also 
um, a very deep, abstract thinker. So Schiller is, in some ways, in my, in my opinion, not only my opinion, um, uh, but others as well, is, you know, why is he writing this? Because probably because Schiller had these, these parts of his personality that he was, and he talks about it actually in his letters, that, that he is trying to, trying to bring into balance. This book is about balance and how beauty, serving beauty through art, through real art, and Schiller talks about the various uh, heights that art can go to. It is endless, and some of the lower levels of art where it is used for material gains and is a, a corrupted version. Um, so if this, if this uh, review sounds very abstract and not very clear, it's because when I read the letters, that's how, that's how it was conveyed to me. It is a very abstract work. It was very difficult for me to understand. It took me a long time to read this um, uh, because I tried to understand it. One helpful commentary that I did read uh, which was actually the reason I even picked this up because I was I am a big fan of Carl Gustav Jung, very influential genius analytical psychologist from the 20th century uh, in Switzerland, but famous all over the world. In his Psychological Types, which is the basis for the Myers Briggs system, if you've ever taken a personality test and you found out that you're an INTJ, whatever those little acronyms mean, you're an in introvert or an extrovert terms that Carl Jung popularized, perhaps even coined um, in his psychological types. Psychological types has uh, uh, was written a long time ago, but is the basis for one of our most popular personality tests. And in that psychological types, um, Carl Jung has a very thick chapter, which is his commentary and critique of on the aesthetic education of man by Frederick Schiller. Um, and so when I was reading Psychological Types by, by Carl Jung, I was very um, impressed by Schiller's thoughts and ideas, in some ways much more eloquent than Carl Jung himself. So I had always wanted to read it and glad I finally did. It is a book that I will probably go back to, um, not even necessarily for, for help with anything, but for the sheer beauty of some of his expressions. For example, I'm not going to be able to say it perfectly, and I don't speak German, so I couldn't even give you the original, but he says that man is only whole when he plays, and he can only play when he is holy man. So this, this, this sort of, he's, he's, go, he's talking in these letters in a sort of a circuitous route going over a lot of the same concepts of how we as humans, and also in society uh, as a species, even uh, how we are bound by our sensuous nature, um, and he uses nature syn synonymously with that, by the material, by the multiplicity, by all of, by the world, by the outside. Um, like an extrovert uh, is just so interested in the outside world that sometimes he doesn't look inside the inner man. So we are bound by our sensuous nature, but then we also have this reason, or he calls the formal impulse, where we seek to not have multiplicity, but we seek unity. So we, we have these two, we have these two impulses that, that are, uh, that sort of contradict each other within us, that so can lead to uh, an internal uh, internal war and, and that deprive each other of their power when they are battling the impulse towards multiplicity, towards nature, so, and feeling is also bound up with that. And then our our formal impulse, our reason, our, our, our impulse to unify experience, so to say. And so Schiller is trying to, to advocate that there is a third impulse when we are on the road towards beauty, which is the play impulse. And this play impulse does something magical with these two where they don't cancel each other out, where we're not in uh, uh, inner battle, so to say, but that we are unified. And Schiller writes that he believes it is our sole duty in existence 
not to get rich, not to impress your in-laws. Our sole duty in existence is to realize that within us, within every single one of us is this pure ideal man. And this pure ideal man is our harmonized nature. And so he believes that the play impulse, which serves beauty that, or that comes alive through beauty, through art, um, through an aesthetic education, is that third impulse which unifies us. And so uh, Carl Jung also uh, had the transcendent function, which was sort of the uni unifying principle for his psychological typology. Uh, I think that it's just whether or not Schiller is right or speaks to you, Carl Jung thought Schiller was absolutely dead on, but only for his personality type, which I believe he classifies Schiller as an introverted thinking type. Um, but that it, Schiller's philosophy or system or his thoughts might not necessarily work for every human, right? We, although we all share similar experiences um, because we're all human, we, there are different types of us. Some of us are more introverted. Some of us are more extroverted. Some of us are more poetical. Some of us are more ph philosophical. Some of us are more uh, geared towards our, our inner life. And some of us are more geared towards our outer life. But whatever the case may be, I found Schiller's work to be beautiful. Um, it's on a topic that I am highly interested in. Uh, and I like this idea of the play impulse, which I suppose Schiller, um, the person who wrote the introduction said that he, it's not his necessarily original idea that it perhaps was borrowed or influenced by Kant. Uh, Schiller had a lot of influences. The, apparently Schiller was a bit of an eclectic, um, had a bit of an eclectic education where he has many, many different influences and you can see that in this. So perhaps if you are someone who is well versed in the history of philosophy or the history of aesthetics, um, you'll be able to perhaps appreciate this book on the aesthetic education of man by Friedrich Schiller a lot more than, than I did. Um, I probably will come back to this. Um, I don't think it's the, it's like, it's, it's just this beautiful work of art with, even with its whatever imperfections that the critics have named. Um, and there are perhaps many more, uh, critiques that one can say. Um, I just liked it and I wanted to share it with you. So I don't know if any of that made sense, the play impulse. And I will say one of the, re one of the reasons that it did grab me was this idea because I myself sometimes do find, I'm not trying to make, uh, I sometimes do find myself sort of um, serious and rational and analytical and not with a lot of like raw feeling. And sometimes I feel myself with raw feeling, but not very analytical. And sometimes I do find myself to be really fully human, really alive when I am playing. And so I guess uh, I would like to be in that mode more and more. Um, so if you can sympathize with, with that, if you've ever had an experience like that where you felt fully uh, at maximum capacity with all of your faculties, where you were sharp, but you were funny and you were happy and you were lively and the world was amazing. That's what I love. Um, Schiller believes that we get to that freedom, liberty, we, the road to liberty is through an aesthetic education, that art has a true art, art, two different types of art, art that can melt us, art that can enliven us, art that, that, that can transform us um, into these playful, fully capable moral beings. And society, there is going to be no reforms, no fixes from the outside. That is only when we, as the constituent members, uh, harmonize ourselves from within, that society will be redeemed and become a moral society. So there's bigger implications than just saving yourself. All right, thank you so much for watching this book review. My name is Rand Freeman. Write your comments down below. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.